Hello everyone, my name is Abhijit Thapte. I'm the Senior Vice President of Artificial Intelligence and Software at AI. I lead the design and development of perception software based on LiDAR point clouds and camera images. Today I will present the advancement in perception for LiDAR point clouds. I will start with an overview of main challenges in the LiDAR point cloud perception. Then I will discuss a set of efficient representations for LiDAR point cloud data. Later, I will take a deeper dive into several state-of-the-art perception algorithms for LiDAR point clouds. Point cloud data presents a unique set of challenges for perception using convolutional neural networks. The first challenge is that the raw point cloud data is unordered. When you read points from a point cloud stream, you receive points in a sequence, but those points are not guaranteed to be next to each other in the 3D space. The 2D and 3D spatial convolution filters need to be and need the points to be next to each other. So it is not possible to apply spatial convolutions directly to unordered point cloud data. The second challenge is the high spatial dimensionality of the point cloud. Most widely used convolution filters, specifically those applied to camera images, use two dimensions, width and height. Since the point cloud data also has depth, it needs convolution filters with three dimensions, width, height, and depth. 3D convolution operations are one order of magnitude more computationally expensive than 2D convolution operations. The third challenge is the sparsity of point cloud data. Most of the 3D volume of a point cloud is empty space. When we apply convolution filters, they operate on an empty space most of the time. That results in a large number of wasted computations. The final challenge is the non-uniform point density. Objects closer to the LiDAR have higher point density, Objects farther away from the LiDAR have lower point density. Those objects with lower point density sometimes do not have enough useful information for the convolution filters to accurately learn features. Let us review how we can overcome the challenges of point clouds using efficient data representations. We can order point clouds using two different techniques. The first technique uses familiar Euclidean space to represent the point cloud. In the 3D to 2D projection, we represent the 3D space by a 2D cell. This makes 2D projection less computationally expensive compared to 3D voxels. But that efficiency comes at the expense of loss of information along one of the spatial axes resulting in lower accuracy. A depth map or a front view preserves the width and height, but loses the finer details of the depth channel. The depth map representation is closest to the 2D camera images. A bird's side view or a top view preserves the width and depth but loses final details of the height channel. Bird's eye view makes computing the yaw angle of the object easy. In a 3D volumetric grid, each voxel occupies a unit of 3D space and becomes a proxy for all points contained within that 3D space. This representation results in a loss of finer spatial resolution. However, it is computationally more expensive compared to 2D representations. An optree provides a 3D representation of a point cloud based on a 3D tree structure. It preserves all the points in the point cloud without the loss of finer spatial resolution, but that comes at the expense of higher computational costs. The second type of representation uses non-Euclidean spaces. Graph-based representation enables capturing local structural relationships across points. However, it imposes an expense of additional computational complexity as it needs additional encoding so that we can apply spatial convolutions to it. Now we start with a deep dive of perception algorithms for 3D point clouds. Our first technique is the 2D depth map. It uses Euclidean space. A 2D camera image provides the most simple representation of a 3D point cloud. It preserves the width and height dimensions of the point cloud and compresses the depth dimension into a single value for each pixel in the 2D image. The 2D depth map uses a 2D grid to represent the 3D point cloud. It voxelizes the point cloud along Y and Z axis and imports X axis information as a channel. We can directly apply 2D convolution filters to the 2D depth map due to the 2D depth map spatially ordered 2D structure. 2D convolutions are computationally less demanding than 3D convolutions. The 2D depth map representation requires less memory compared to 3D volumetric grids. When multiple points get encoded to a single 2D voxel, we lose high resolution information that leads to accuracy degradation. 
also objects can overlap with each other in the 2D depth map view representation. Velo FCN is the most common prominent example of this approach. Velo FCN projects each 3D point to 2D using azimuth and elevation angles. It encodes distance and height at channels. In this view, objects can overlap with each other. In the case of multiple objects at the same azimuth and elevation angles, it encodes only the nearest object. As shown in the Velo FCN architecture diagram, the first three convolution layers of Velo FCN downsample the CNN feature map. Then the deconvolution layers upsample the CNN feature maps. Uh, finally, the network splits into two branches, the object nest classification branch and 3D bounding box regression branch. Each of those branches has uh, two more deconvolution layers. The network concatenates features from the second layer with the fourth layer and features from the first layer with the fifth layer. Combining features from lower layers and higher layers improves the prediction of small objects and object ages. The input point map, output objectness map, and bounding box map are of the same width and height to provide a point-wise prediction. Our second technique is a 2D bird's eye view. It uses Euclidean space. The bird's eye view representation preserves the depth and width dimensions of a point cloud and compresses the height dimension into a single value for each pixel in the 2D image. The 2D bird's eye view uses a 2D grid to represent a 3D point cloud. It voxelizes the point cloud along the X and Y axis and imports the Z axis information as a channel. Uh, similar to 2D depth map, 2D bird's eye view benefits from computationally less demanding 2D convolutions and suffers from accuracy degradation. Uh, since objects rarely overlap each other in the 2D bird's eye view representation, uh, they also preserve uh, physical sizes when projected to the bird's eye view, unlike the depth map view. Further, bird's eye view tend to have a more sparse point cloud views represent to, compared to the depth map. Uh, there are multiple CNN architectures based on 2D bird's eye view re data representation. Complex Yolo uses hand-crafted encodings to encode height, intensity, and density. It uses Yolo V2 CNN architecture as the backbone. Uh, it extends the backbone using a spatial Euler region proposal network to predict 3D bounding boxes with the yaw angle of the object. Point pillars use point nets to learn a representation of point clouds organized in a vertical column called pillars. By lurking features, instead of using a fixed encoding, the network can leverage complete information represented by the point cloud. Furthermore, there is no need to tune the binning of the point cloud along the z-axis. As shown in the point pillars architecture diagram, the first stage of the point pillars network consists of a feature encoder network that converts a 3D point cloud into a 2D sparse pseudo image. The second stage consists of a 2D convolutional backbone that learns the high level features from the 2D pseudo image. The backbone has two sub networks. Top down network down samples the features. Uh, the second network up samples and concatenates those features. The final stage consists of a single shot detector like detection head that detects objects and regresses 3D bounding boxes. Our third technique is 2D multi-view. It uses Euclidean space. Multi-view includes both bird's eye view and depth map representations. This approach preserves more high resolution information and obtains higher accuracy. We can directly apply uh, 2D convolutions due to spatially ordered 2D structure of the 2D bird's eye view and the 2D depth map view. 2D convolutions are computationally less expensive than 3D convolutions. This approach is computationally more expensive than using a bird's eye view or a depth map view alone. MV3D is a well-known example of this approach. MV3D encodes the bird's eye view representation by height, intensity, and normalized density. It encodes detailed height information by dividing height into M slices. Thus, the total number of encoded channels is N plus two. The MV3D depth map is similar to Hello FCM. It encodes distance, intensity, and height at channels. As shown in the MV3D architecture diagram, the first stage of MV3D consists of a 3D proposal network. The 3D proposal network generates 3D bounding box proposals from a bird's eye view using a set of 3D prior boxes. It uses bilinear upsampling after the last convolution layer in the proposal network to provide higher resolution 
to help detection of smaller objects. 3D proposal network passes a depth map view through a series of convolution layers followed by sampling deconvolution layers. The second stage consists of a region-based fusion network. It applies ROI pooling to features from multiple views and leverages a hierarchical deep fusion approach to combine those pooled features. Then it classifies object proposals and regresses oriented 3D bounding boxes. Our fourth technique is 3D volumetric grid. It uses Euclidean space. A 3D volumetric grid is the simplest and highly uniform spatial representation of a 3D point cloud. It preserves all three dimensions, depth, width, and height. It voxelizes the point cloud along all three dimensions. As a single voxel may contain more than one point, the voxel has to encode those multiple points to represent them. We can directly apply 3D convolutions to a 3D volumetric grid due to its spatially ordered 3D structure. However, 3D convolutions are computationally much more expensive than 2D convolutions. When multiple points get encoded to a single 3D voxel, we lose high resolution information that leads to lower accuracy. The volumetric grid stores even empty space voxels. Typically, point clouds tend to be sparse with a lot of empty space. Thus, 3D volumetric grids have much higher memory requirements compared to 2D representations. The most prominent example of 3D voxel-based perception is voxelnet. It uses a voxel feature encoding layer to encode randomly sampled points from a voxel to sparse 4D tensors. Voxelnet uses 3D convolutions that result in higher computation costs and can take longer inference times. As shown in the Voxelnet architecture diagram, Voxelnet consists of three stages. The first stage is a feature learning network. This stage subdivides a 3D point cloud into equally spaced voxels. Then it groups the points in the point cloud according to the voxels they belong to. It samples a fixed number of points from each voxel to decrease the computation costs and decrease the imbalance of points across voxels. Stacked voxel feature encoding encodes points into a 4D sparse tensor. The second stage consists of a 3D convolutional neural network that downsamples the data and learns higher level feature map. A final stage is the region proposal network. The region proposal network has full, three fully convolutional blocks. The RPN deconverts and concatenates the outputs of each of those blocks to construct a high resolution feature map. Finally, it maps the high resolution feature map to a classification probability score map and the 3D bounding box regression map. Our fifth technique is an op tree. It uses Euclidean space. An op tree is a tree data structure with exactly eight nodes. We can use an op tree to partition a 3D space into eight octants. We can further subdivide each octant into eight suboctants recursively. Thus, we can create an op tree with any depth. So it is possible to create an op tree that preserves high resolution information by representing each point in the point cloud as a node in the op tree. Since no op tree nodes represent the empty space in the point cloud, memory is most efficiently used by an op tree, unlike 3D volumetric grid. However, accessing multiple levels of depths of an op tree while applying convolution operations is computationally expensive. Based on the varying density of point points in a point cloud, spatially contiguous points may get assigned to nodes at different depths. So we need to convert an op tree to a tensor representing spatially contiguous points before we can apply 3D convolution filters to an op tree. There are two prominent examples of op tree based CNNs. The first example, OCNET, limits the depth of op tree to three levels and places op trees into a regular grid. Opnet encodes the nodes of octrees using a bit string encoding. This encoding is less memory efficient than the standard octree, but it is computationally more efficient. Opnet defines custom operators for converting octree data into 3D tensors of spatially contiguous points. Opnet also defines specialized 3D convolution and 3D pooling operators uh, to apply to those 3D tensors. The second example is octree guided CNN with spherical convolution kernels. The spherical convolution kernels divide the 3D space into uh, 3D spheres. 
unlike Ocne, this design uses deeper octaves, but it uses the same number of hidden layers as Freedev. This design achieves higher accuracy compared to Ocne. However, it is computationally more expensive than Ocne. Our sixth and final technique is a graph. It uses non-Euclidean space. A graph consists of a set of nodes and a set of edges connecting them. The vertex of a point graph stores a single point in a point cloud. Thus, the point graph stores high resolution data without information loss and helps obtain high accuracy. However, it suffers from an expensive computational load. Since the graph does not store empty space in the 3D point cloud, it provides a memory efficient representation. Point GNN is one of the examples of a graph neural network. As shown in the point GNN architecture diagram, the first stage consists of graph construction. It encodes each point in the point cloud as a vertex in the point graph. Graph construction stores a feature vector for each vertex. The feature vector consists of 3D coordinates of the point and state values. It uses a multi-layer perceptron to embed intensity and other features as the initial state. It uses a fixed radius to connect vertices to its neighbors. The second stage consists of a point GNN neural network. Point GNN operates on point graph as an input. Point GNN has multiple hidden layers and uh, two heads, one for classification and the other for 3D bounding box regression. The classification head assigns one of the object classes or background classes uh, to the vertex. The 3D bounding box regression head includes the vertex in loss calculation if the vertex is within the bounding box. The final stage consists of a box merging and scoring. As multiple vertices can belong to the same object, the neural network can output multiple bounding boxes for the same object. The box merging and scoring algorithm uses modified non-maximum separation for predicting the best 3D bounding box. Now I will conclude the deep dive of perception algorithms for 3D point clouds. As we move from simple 2D representations to complex 3D representation, the data resolution increases, leading to higher accuracy and higher computations. As a result, the speed of execution reduces. We have an interesting situation with memory where due to sparsity, octree and graph representations have lower memory needs than the 3D volumetric grid.